Hello, I'm Ella Chu, sophomore at McCracken County High School. And I'm Kanan Shanks, junior at McCracken County High School. Welcome to West Kentucky Student News. In our top story, you may have noticed some distinct looking trailers outside of different businesses across our area. Some have said that they look like solar panels, but they're actually cameras. Reporter Madison Hayes and Ella Chu found out more. Recently, camera trailers have been placed around town to increase security and help prevent crime. The Paducah Police Department created a partnership with LiveView Technologies and local retailers. We talked to Officer Blake Quinn about why they were placed. The partnership um, was created by, by LVT, and what they're doing is they're actually collecting statistical data. Uh, Paducah was chosen along with an agency in Alabama as part of a pilot program, and so the, the efforts for that will be to collect data to determine the effectiveness of the LVT camera systems. We asked some students for their opinions. Junior Braden Gilbert shares his opinion on the cameras. It's good because it helps stop theft, and now it's also helped stop speeders because people think it's about speeding, and it's not. Sophomore Jillian Roach says she has other ideas for the cameras. I feel like we should get like little camps robots that zoom around to help stop crime and like littering. I feel like we should get those instead. Officer Blake Quinn also informed us where the ideal spots of the trailers are. So right now, 14 different companies have agreed to have the cameras put on their locations, and it's everywhere from Academy Sports to Walmart. There are approximately 30 cameras in the city at this time. The camera trailers are planned to be removed in six to eight months. McCracken County is home to multiple colonies of stray cats. Mustang TV's Atlee Stanley looked into the McGangsters, a local nonprofit organization committed to rescuing these animals and controlling their population. Jim Gatlin and Kevin Hendrick are the two faces behind the McGangsters, who have dedicated their time by waking up before sunrise and staying out past sundown, saving and finding home for stray cats across McCracken County. Uh, we just love cats. I mean, you, you, you see a hungry cat, what are you going to do? You can't ignore it. And I don't guess the apple fell far from the tree. My parents had cats. I thought I had escaped the mafia, and but it, taking care of cats is like the shed mafia. Once you're in, you never get out. Since they are a nonprofit organization, the McGangsters accept donations, including, but not limited to, cat food and money. Everything goes towards their efforts to save stray cats. So we can keep the cats fed. We, we're responsible for providing food for approximately 150 cats twice a day. Uh, in addition to the routes that Kevin and I feed, we have other colony caretakers around town who take care of individual colonies and we supply food for them also. However, with as many strays as there are, the McGangsters are unable to rescue outside of the McCracken County area. The McGangsters also help in getting stray cats spayed and neutered to help control colony populations. They host five to six events throughout the year with pop-up fundraisers at Banks Market in Lone Oak. To donate or for more information, check out their Facebook page, facebook.com slash the McGangsters. It's the season of giving. The Marshall County baseball team recently took an opportunity to give back to the community. Gloves and bats are not needed. Hammers and drills will get this work done. The Marshalls partnered up with the Bed Ministry and helped build beds for kids and families in need. The work took place on the Marshall County campus. This is the second year that the team has participated. Here's Coach Tyler O'Daniel to tell what the building, what building the beds meant to him and the team. I think it's great. You know, the guys are out there. They're in small groups, helping each other out. You know, we try to we try to get the older guys to help the younger guys and, and have that leadership aspect of it, but. Um, yeah, man, it, it went great. It was smooth, and, and I think we did a lot of good. Where are the beds going, and how many did you guys build? We built eight this year. We built ten last year, um, and we don't really know where the beds go. It's just they go where they're needed. Um, you know, I think last year several of the beds went to tornado victims, um, and then this year we don't really know, but we were told that they will go to, to individuals in our community, which is awesome. Monday, August 7th of 2023. That's the date McCracken County students will return to school next year if the school members, but school board members vote yes. They'll have that vote at their next meeting after unveiling the 2023 to 24 school calendar at their last meeting. The district calendar is set by a committee including teachers, faculty, parents, and students. Director of Pupil Personnel Brian Bolin told us through email that the current interim calendar has students returning on August 7th, but then they will be out for the next day for Emancipation Day. Another change is that while students will be off for spring break April 1st through 5th like normal, students will also get off the following Monday as a total solar eclipse will hit our area. MCHS Principal Matt Hauser says whatever the board decides, he'll roll with it. There are years where it's, it's weird and we come for a day and then we're out. 
Uh, so it wouldn't be anything out of the ordinary. Sure, I would rather not have to come a day and, and then sit a day out. But, I mean, if that's what the committee decides and that's what's best for the calendar, then we will certainly do that and have no problem. There will be a second reading and vote of approval at the board's December 15th meeting. Boland told us they do not re release the interim schedule due t to the public, so as not to have confusion if changes are made between it and the final schedule. Last year, nearly 3.5 million truck drivers moved 11 billion tons of freight throughout the United States, representing almost 75% of all domestic shipments. The trucking industry is almost $900 billion slice of our economy, and their work help keeps life moving every day in our nation. In spite of those impressive numbers, there is an ongoing truck driver shortage according to the American Trucking Association. This year, they reported a deficit of 78,000 drivers, brought on by a high number of retirements in recent years, coupled with an increasing demand for freight shipping. Instructors of West Kentucky Community Technical College's commercial driver license program are working to go to the next generation of drivers out on the road, easing the problem faced by many trucking companies while also opening the door to high paying jobs for students. There is no shortage of jobs. I haven't had one student here yet that has not had a job, you know, within the first couple of weeks of after graduating from our uh, class. Uh, we had two recruiters in here today and every one of these students, they wanted a job the day after they get their license, they could move on to a company. First thing I'll tell them about the money they can make. And you ain't gonna make this kind of money, you know, here working in a factory or something like that. I've got drivers making anywhere between 70 to 95,000 a year the first year. It's a good paying job and no longer what it takes to get through training, it pays for itself. I could take every student that every one of your campuses has and put them into an orientation every week. We do two orientations a week. We're trying to get at least 10 to 20 students in every orientation and we run two a week all year long. Uh, the pay, the sky's the limit. I mean, if you want to work, you, the money's there. Uh, if you want to get 50,000 a year all the way up to in the hundred thousands, I mean, it, it's the money's there. Congratulations to McCracken County High School student Owen Cody on being selected to the National Association for Music Education All-National Modern Band. Mustang TV's Marianne Portoliano reports. The event took place two weeks ago in Washington, D.C. Although the audition process was difficult, Owen said it was a great experience. It was very eye-opening and I thoroughly enjoyed all the experiences that I took place in and all the people I met and my directors. Excellent. Not only did Owen have a great time, band director Mr. Ray has his own highlights. He chaperoned during the event. The experience of being there to uh, listen to and watch and experience rehearsal techniques and a lot of it just backed up things that I already know and do. It feels kind of good when you go into a thing like this and you're seeing this uh, these national clinicians that do the same thing you do. To be eligible to apply, you must be a sophomore, junior, or senior who made it to Allstate Band. Unfortunately, they will be taking a year off, so best of luck to those in future years. Mr. Ray gives some of his advice on how you can prepare. The key is work really hard on your instrument, get good, and just be prepared. Check out NAFME.org for more information. Recently, the McCracken County High School students went to a career fair for ideas and information on potential careers. 45 businesses, ag programs, and medical programs came for the career fair. These included Jackson Purchase, Purchase Energy Cooperative, Lone Oak Animal Clinic, Baptist Health, and more. Healthcare. Baptist Health Paducah. We're all about healthcare. We're about taking care of our community. Yeah. You can have a high school degree all the way up to bachelor's and master's depending on what specialty you want to go in. You can go to the Baptist website and go under careers and then you can pick. We have hospitals all over the state of Kentucky and Indiana and you can pick which hospital area you're interested in, Lexington, Louisville, Paducah, whichever. Click on that and you can see all the posted jobs and apply directly right there. It's sort of helpful for me. I mean, I mean, I'm considering more options now. But I think for I think it's been really helpful for a lot more other people that were 
more interested in already thinking of doing these things. The future Farmers of America leadership team helped out school counselors by not only making sure the event ran smoothly, but also helping invite businesses. The McCracken County Theater Department competed and won first place at state with their fall play, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. The state competition was hosted by Campbellsville University. Cast member Carson Bradford tells us about his experience at the competition. It was very emotional. It's the first time we've ever won state or even advanced past state. And, you know, we're just preparing now. We're kind of taking a little bit of a break. And then we're going back in March for SETC in Lexington. And then we'll, we'll see how we compete there. Meanwhile, the cast list is set and rehearsals have begun for McCracken's spring musical, Beauty and the Beast. Make plans to see the show this March. West Kentucky Communical and Technical College's Workforce Solutions Program recently held another marine firefighting training course at its training facility near the River Industry Hub in downtown Paducah. The course covers the U.S. Coast Guard basic safety, fire prevention, and firefighting requirements. It gives those working on the river certifications needed for their careers, but more importantly, they learn the causes of many water vessel fires such as welding and cutting, smoking, poor housekeeping, and faulty electrical equipment and appliances. Over the 16-hour course, trainees also learn to navigate through confined smoky spaces in addition to fighting fires, conveying everything from fire extinguisher use to controlling diesel fuel fires. The Workforce Solutions course helps meet the needs of riverboat companies and beyond as they comply with federal regulations which keeps crews safe on the job. West Kentucky Community and Technical College recently marked the second anniversary of a $15 million gift to the college from the Mackenzie Scott National Philanthropic Trust. The focus of the gift was to enhance diversity, equity, and inclusion. During the initial 2020 allotments, 100 scholarship awards were presented to selected nonprofit and diversity, equity, and inclusion focused organizations. WKCTC President Dr. Anton Reese announced that the second allotment of $124,000 will provide more than 200 new and renewed scholarships as well as cash donations to three sectors. First, the college will provide scholarships to students from area technology centers to help them enter the workforce quickly. In the second sector, WKCTC provides support to area parents by working with regional family resource centers and Paducah Head Start through community connections, scholarships, and monetary donations. And lastly, WKCTC will work with the Paducah Area Chamber of Commerce to provide funding for African American and Hispanic small business owners, chamber memberships, and workshops, and WKCTC's Workforce Solutions Training. The overall goal is to increase educational opportunities for regional diverse populations, low-income individuals, and others who have faced barriers to education and to enhance collaborations with community organizations who serve vulnerable populations. Basketball fans from across the region got an early Christmas present this year. The annual Hoop Fest took place at Marshall County High School. Hoop Fest is a three-day event hosting 27 teams from across the country. S several thousand fans watch multiple games a day, including the number one team in the country, Link Academy. This event raises thousands of dollars for school clubs and local charities, but basketball is why everyone shows up. Why do you keep coming back? What's the reason? Just the atmosphere is awesome. It's exciting. Great to see teams from outside of our region and yeah. really fun. Athletes who commit to college teams get to sign papers in front of their friends and family at McCracken County High School once per semester. Four baseball athletes signed. Daniel Higdon signed to Hillsdale College in Michigan. Zach Sims will go to John A. Logan College. Davis Beal will attend Wren Lake College. And Nathan Land is headed to Louisville and Bellarmine University. Softball standout Allie Hutchins will attend the University of Kentucky where she will play softball, while swimmer Justice Beard is headed to the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Volleyball players Caroline Civils and Ellie Whiteside join in. Civils is headed to Georgia and Shorter University, while Whiteside will stay in state and play for Moorhead, Uni Moorhead State University. Senior Keegan Tyrone is headed north to St. Paul, Minnesota to play for Hamline University. He shared why he chose to continue playing at the Division III school. I chose it because I just felt like when I went up there for three, three days, I just felt like I bonded good with the guys. I hate it. it was a nice visit for me. Um, love the coach. It was really nice. Um, and I just love the team. Um, I've, been, I've been around sports my whole life. Um, I've loved sports my whole life, and I just felt like I could take it a step further and go try to maybe go a step further and try to go on the pros or play a couple of futures events. The next McCracken County Signing Day will take place in the spring. Thank you for joining us for another episode of West Kentucky Student News. Be sure to follow Paducah 2 on Facebook and YouTube to see previous and future episodes. <laughs>